So these are the steps that we discussed. Um, first thing is to deploy the hardware, which is UCS servers and install ESXi um, VMware operating system. Uh, then you create a PCD virtual machine. Now this is an OVA, which is shipped along with CUCM 10.x bootable image, right? So uh, this OVA is a virtual appliance, which means that it in, it in, inbuilt you have the ISO as well. So you deploy the you deploy a virtual machine using the PCD OVA and, and you power it on and it will also boot PCD for you. You do not have to um, you know connect it to a separate uh, operating system or ISO image, etc. Right? Inside PCD, you have the SFTP data store where you store all the necessary ISO images. Right? Um, next, you connect the PCD to the ESXi host using the ESXi host root username and password. The reason why we need root username and password is because PCD needs to control the CUCM10 OVAs. Right? Next step is discover cluster where you will give the existing clusters publisher IP address and OS admin username and password into PCD. PCD will then contact the publisher and get information about all the other nodes in the cluster. And PCD is going to install a migration COP file, which PCD will leverage later on during migration task. Right? Uh, the next thing to do is to create virtual machines using CUCM10 OVA. Uh, CUCM10 OVA is available on Cisco.com. Then you define a migration cluster. So in this phase, you, you map your existing MCS server nodes to your target virtual machine OVAs. And then you create a migration task wherein you, you choose the ISO image that you, that you want to use for installation of your new VMs and you schedule the task. So migration is supported from CUCM version 615, 713, 715 onwards, whereas upgrade, switch version, and restart are supported from 861 onwards. Now, if you note, PCD can only be used to move to 10.x, right? If you want to upgrade, for example, from 615 to 9.1, PCD is not the software. You'll have to again go via the legacy way. So PCD is designed to is migration to CUCM version 10.x. Upgrades can be performed on clusters running 8.6.1 and onwards. Like I mentioned, there are two types of migration. One is simple migration and the other is migration with network changes. In case of simple migration, um, the customer would need a downtime. Basically, we will power off the server while we are installing the new virtual machine with CCM 10.x, having the same network information as the existing server, right? Whereas in case of migration with network changes, we will deploy a new CCM 10.x with different network information. Uh, and now there won't be any duplicate IP address clash, and, and that's the reason why PCD does not have to power off your existing cluster. So the cluster will continue to run, the phones will be registered, your, all your <clears throat> calls will continue to function, and later on, you can do a cutoff from your existing uh, legacy cluster to CUCM 10.x cluster. Now let's take a demo of simple migration, and I will also show you where you can uh, choose to do a migration with uh, different network information. So first thing that you do is you need to have a, a UCS server running ESXi host. You need to download the CUCM 10, 10.x OVA and the ISO file, and you need to create CUCM OVA. You need to create virtual machines using CUCM 10.x OVA. Now, let me just drive you through what I have done in my lab, and I think that will bring a lot more clarification. So I have this. Okay, let's begin from here. So I have the CUCM10 OVA here, which I have downloaded from Cisco.com. And uh, this is the bootable for CUCM10.x. If you purchase CUCM10.x, this will be shipped to you along with the PCD software, right? And uh, you ha I have an ESXi host, which I'm going to log in right now. And 
which is already running ESXi VMware operating system. So now I can create virtual machines. The first virtual machine that I'm going to create is is PCD virtual machine. In my case, PCD is not running on this ESXi. So it's not necessary that, you know, if, if I'm doing a migration to virtual machines on, uh, on this particular ESXi host, I need a PCD for this. And if I'm doing it for a separate ESXi host, I need another PCD. No, using one PCD, you know, you can, <clears throat> you can do multiple migration tasks on different ESXi hosts. Right, and it can be it can be running anywhere, as long as it has network access to all these ESXi hosts and to your existing clusters. Right, so I have deployed a virtual machine using uh, the OVA, which I showed on the desktop. Right, so uh, all I did was file deploy OVA template and then create a virtual machine. That's it. The next thing to do is to transfer file ISOs into PCD, right? Now this is how the PCD software looks like. And <clears throat> this is the monitoring, this is the monitoring page. And if you see auto refresh, uh, this is nothing but every one or two minutes it is going to refresh this page. A lot of engineers and partners had this question that what is this auto refresh? So uh, I just wanted to clarify that here. The next thing is administration. You go to SFTP data store. Right now, I don't have any ISO available, so I need to upload the ISO into the SFTP data store. How I'm going to do that is uh, on Windows PC, you need something like FileZilla, or you know, if you're having Mac, it has native Linux, so you can directly do it from the CLI. So I connect to the PCD. The username always remains admin SFTP. Right, and the password is the OS admin password of your PCB application. So no matter what OS admin password you have, the username is always admin SFTP. So if you want to SFTP into PCD, the username will always be admin SFTP, and the password will be your PCD OS admin password. Right, and I do a quick connect. So now it's connected, and you can see there are several folders. This is used for COP files, so these are the COP files which are saved inside PCD, right? Uh, fresh install is used during migration and fresh install of a new UC cluster. Then you also have upgrade. So if you are performing an upgrade task, you need to put the up upgrade ISO into this specific folder. So since I want to do a migrate task, I will move the bootable image from my desktop into the PCD SFTP fresh install folder. Since it's a big image of 5 GB, it is going to take some time. All right, the bootable disk transfer is, um, image transfer is complete now. And if you go into PCD, Administration, SFTP Data Store, you should be able to see Fresh Install. Under Fresh Install directly, the bootable image, right? So I have downloaded the cucm 10x OVA. I have downloaded the ISO. Uh, I have a UCS server running ESXi host. Well, in the ESXi host, I created a virtual machine using CUCM OVA. Right, and I deployed PCD as well. Now, using SFTP, I transferred the bootable CUCM 10.x ISO file into PCD fresh install directory. Uh, fresh install directory can be used during migration as well as fresh install tasks. Right, you also have the upgrade folder, like I, sh like I uh, you know, get showed that can be used to uh, transfer. ISOs that will be used for upgrade task. So with all these basics, now let's move on to the migration step. So I have deployed the hardware and installed ESXi, deployed the PCD virtual machine, downloaded the CCM10 OVA and ISO image, 
and created a target virtual machine using OVA and transferred the ISO image via SFTP to into PCD SFTP data store. Now the next task is to discover cluster. Right? So what it needs to do is if you, you need to get into inventory clusters. Now you need to give a nickname which is CCM A dot text. So just to give you a demo, what I'm going to try and do is I'm trying to migrate this call manager running on MCS with version 862 to CCM 10.x virtual machine. Okay, so let's go back. to PCD and the IP address for that CCM 8.x machine is 10.106.103.231 and you need to give the OS admin username and password and then you click on next. So what PCD is going to do is it is going to contact the publisher, retrieve information about all the other nodes in the cluster and it is going to install a migrate cop file one by one into all these nodes. So it has discovered the publisher, right, using the IP address OS admin credentials. It was able to log in into the publisher and now it is trying to install cop file and, and you can see that it is, it is doing its job currently. Now this takes, uh, you know, in our, in our lab it takes somewhere between 15 minutes, you know, but if it's, uh, if it's a big cluster and, you know, a node separated over one, so you can imagine the time that it can take. It can take a lot more time, can go up to maybe an hour or even more uh, for, for a big cluster. So, and that depends on the number of nodes that you have deployed over one and, and your one connectivity link. And this communication happens using SSH. So you need to have your port 22 open for PCD to contact your uh, nodes in your existing cluster and deploy the COP file. Okay, since I have just one node, you know, it took around five to 10 minutes to discover the publisher and install the COP file. So now if I log in into the, into the publisher and if I give show version active, This is the COP file you see, uh, PCB has installed into my server, right? And these COP files, you do not have to actually, uh, you know, install any COP file into PCD, which, 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 which will PCD then use to uh, install into the CUCM. PCD, when you, when you boot the PCD ISO, it comes inbuilt into the PCD software. So if I go to SFTP and if I go to COP file, like I said, these COP files are already present here. So you do not have to externally install any COP file into PCD or COP file data store. Right, also, uh, if you see, I have these phones which are configured and one of them is registered at the moment. So when I migrate to CCM 10.x, all this phone information should now should should be seen on my CCM 10.x publisher, and the phone needs to be registered to the 10.x server. Uh, 